Hello, my name is Jayani Pereira with the Division of Lifecycle API. On behalf of myself and Yingzi Wang, welcome to our poster on Completeness Assessments, CAs. The purpose of this poster is to share with you the current CA status, knowledge-aided assessment and structured applications, CASA for CA, common issues, and GADU for commitment letter statistics. The recent development and implementation of CASA interface for CA has resulted in significant accomplishments, such as better review functions, easier data pulling, and faster process turnaround time. The CA data gathered over the last eight years will be used to show the performance of the GADU for commitments. Finally, the observations over the last years will be used to provide recommendations to the industry to improve the overall CA process. INSEE is going to start you off on current CA status and CASA for CA. And later, I will be sharing with you some historical CA data, GADU for commitment letter statistics, and overall advice to the industry. Before we start, I would like to thank David Skanky, Jason Crawford, Larissa Wu, and Xiang Yu for their help in the preparation of this poster. Thank you very much for the great introduction, Jianyi. My name is Ying Zi Wang. I work as a chemist at Division of Lifecycle API, DL API. First, I would like to use a flowchart to illustrate the CA process. The CA process is consisted of structured administrative steps CA review tasks, and communications with DMF holders. The major component, CA project, is created for DL API to evaluate DMFs in accordance with the criteria set out in the Kudufa Completeness Assessment Checklist. As a significant development for this process, concepts of a new CEDAR pharmaceutical quality assessment system CASA have been adopted since March of 2020. Additionally, I would like to mention the timeline of CA process briefly. As of October 1st, 2012, Type 2 API DMFs must undergo CA under GUDUFA. The FDA committed to complete the initial CA review for 90% of Type 2 API DMFs within 60 days of the later date of DMF submission or DMF fee payment. The internally targeted goal is 45 days. CASA stands for Knowledge Aided Assessment and Structured Applications. The system is designed to capture and manage knowledge during the life cycle of a drug product establish rules and algorithms for risk assessment, control, and communication, perform computer-aided analysis of applications to compare regulatory standards and quality risks across applications and facilities, and provide a structured assessment that minimizes text-based narratives and the summarization of provided information. The development aims to enriching the effectiveness, efficiency, and the consistency of information sharing and the regulatory quality oversight through lifecycle management of products and facilities in a standardized and structured format. CASA CA Initiative was launched in the December of 2019. The design achieved the maintaining of efficiency and the consistency of the existing CA processes. It also enables knowledge management and provides better data reporting and data mining functions. This is very critical as DMFCAs are required to be reported to Congress annually as a GUDUFA metric. In addition, CASA allows the DMF team to communicate with the industry 
with a more efficiently collected data and help the industry to improve their DMF submissions. This is a snapshot of CASAC interface. It features a data retrievable JSON platform. Although the review content is the same as in the previous PDF process. During the CASAC analysis, the primary reviewer can indicate a missing DMF component and add the detailed comments about the missing component. The QAL content can be entered by both primary and secondary reviewers for sharing the relevant information and opinions. For the missing component to be sent to the DMF holder, a default information request or deficiency is automatically generated, which can be revised according to the missing information. A finished JSON file can be exported as a Word document which is subsequently converted into a PDF report for being uploaded and archived into the CEDAR IT supported platform. Entries in the JSON platform can be pulled for data reporting and data mining. With the CASA CA interface, one can get the statistic data of a queried subject in seconds. This query work might have taken weeks or months without CASA. Next, I would like to show you an example of the function. This slide shows that from the launch of the CASA CA interface in the March of 2020 to November of 2020, 206 DMFs have been reviewed per CA guidance requirements. 98 of the reviewed DMFs were found incomplete. Through CASA query, we summarized the top 10 deficiencies. Among the deficiencies, drug substance labels, general properties and the structural characterization information for drug substance, CGMP statements, and the information related to all manufacturing facilities starting material designation and the certificates of analysis for raw materials were found to be among top missing components in DMF submissions. Now please allow me switch to a similar process, the A2F filing review process. The process is applicable when there is no reference to a type 2 DMF in the 350H form of an ANDA submission, since the drug substance information is fully embedded in the ANDA. Under such a circumstance, a consult task is created so that DL API would use a CA type checklist to assist in determining whether the drug substance module contains all required information. Here are some features of A2F process. A2F process follows a shorter timeline. It helps to determine the filing status of an ANDA. The workload is not under CASA interface yet. In an A2F review, when no CA type comment is entered, or only minor CA type comments are entered for the drug substance module, a green light will be given for ANDA filing. On the other hand, if there are major drug substance filing issues, a refuse to receive funding will be resulted for the referencing application. The A2F process only represents a small amount in the DLAPI CA type workload. Next, going back to CA, on behalf of DLAPI CA team, Gianni will share more information data and the findings regarding CA process with you. Thank you, Yingzi. As I mentioned during the introduction, I will be presenting some historical completeness assessment data and get you for commitment letter statistics, as well as overall advice to the industry. First, I'm going to share with you some historical completeness assessment data for first cycle completeness assessments. 
Since the implementation of Gadoo for One in October 2012, we have been keeping track of all the CAs we completed each year. Let's look at Gadoo for One data for first cycle CAs broken down by the fiscal year. At the time of Gadoo for implementation, we had a huge backlog of drug master files to perform initial completeness assessment. That year, we completed over 900 full CAs. So the cycle one percentage with status complete for the very first year was quite low, around 23%. But over the next four fiscal years, the percentage for cycle completes more than doubled to 66%. Here's the Gadoo for 2 data for first cycle completeness assessments. For the Gadoo for 2, we don't see a steady increase in percentage first cycle completes that we saw for Gadoo for 1. But percentage first cycle completes are still over 50%, except for FY19. And the average first cycle completes for Gadoo for 2 is around 52%. Let's look at some Gadoo for two subsequent cycle CA data. Here you see cycle one complete and cycle two complete for the last three fiscal years. Take a look at FY18 data. We have completed 326 full CAs during FY18. Out of those, 164 were found complete during first cycle and an additional 150 were found complete during cycle 2. After combining cycle 1 and cycle 2, over 96% were found to be complete. Similar results were seen during fiscal years 19 and 20. You saw in the last slide that the average for cycle completes for Gadoo for 2 is around 52%. However, if you look at the past three fiscal years of Gadoo for two, over 93% DMFs were found complete just after two CA cycles. That means the overall CA performance is excellent. And I think you will agree with what I just said when you see the number of ANDAS refused to receive due to drug master files. This table shows the number of ANDAS refused to receive due to DMFs being incomplete for the last six fiscal years. As you can see, the numbers are very small and have been readily declining from FY15 to FY20. During fiscal year 20, only one ANDA was refused to receive. So we can confidently say that the completeness assessments are rarely a filing issue. We have now come to the second topic of my presentation, how we have been delivering the Gadoo for two commitments. As you know, completeness assessment metric is annually reported to Congress. According to Gadoo for two commitment letter, we need to perform the initial completeness assessment of 90% of type 2 DMFs within 60 days of the later date of the DMF submission date or the DMF fee payment date. As you can see from FY18, 19, 19 and 20 data, we have overperformed our commitment to the industry. 99% for fiscal year 20 is the highest we have achieved so far. I'm now going to share with you two other statistics. First adequate letters, FAs, and no further comment letters, NFCs. These numbers are not congressionally reported. FA letter is issued once the DMF is undergone a full scientific review and found adequate for the first time. FA letters are only issued when the DMF is referenced by at least one and a. On the other hand, NFC letter is issued to the DMF when the ANDA reference DMF has been either approved or tentatively approved. We have seen an increase in the number of FA and NFC letters we have issued for the last three years. The current, line, the current timeline for FA letters is 30 days 
and for NFCs, it's a little bit longer. Two other items in the GADUFA commitment letter are teleconferences and email exchanges to discuss the contents of DMF complete response letters and provide clarification. I'm not going to share any data with you since there is a teleconference poster by Benjamin Danso and myself. I refer you to that poster for data and current status of TCONs and email exchanges. Please check that out. Here are a few things the industry has been doing well over the years with regards to the completeness assessment process of the DMF. You have been paying GADUFA fees at least six months prior to the submission of the reference marketing applications. You saw the impact of that with the low number of ANDAs refused to receive due to DMFs. Most of the DMF submissions are substantially complete which is why we have over 90% of the DMFs found complete with just two cycles. We have seen a timely response of the GADUFA incomplete letters. We keep a track of when the incomplete letters are issued and if we don't see a response within three months, we will send you a courtesy email. You have been sending notifications to the OGD mailbox when a response is submitted. We cannot stress enough the importance of notifications to the OGD mailbox. If you don't send a notification, there's no way for us to know whether a response has been submitted. These notifications help us complete the subsequent cycles in a timely manner. So please keep them coming. As I promised at the start of my presentation, let me share with you a few things you can do to further improve this process. My colleague Yingxi shared with you the top 10 most common CA deficiencies we have seen and specific things missing in each deficiency. To reduce the number of incomplete comments issued and to increase the first cycle completeness of DMFs, we ask you to follow CA guidance for industry to see which type of information needs to be included in each section of the DMF. A link to the final guidance published in October 2017 is provided in the next slide, and you can also find the link on FDA website. If you don't hear from us within 45 days of paying the GADUFA fee, please email OGD mailbox. We are happy to let you know the status of your DMF. Finally, if you still have a paper DMF, please consider submitting a complete update of the DMF in electronic format. Here are some useful links and contact information. The DMF, uh, DMF website, link to the CA final guidance, and a few ways you can communicate with us. Thank you for taking a look at our poster. Please remember to submit your questions using the link provided on workshop poster page. Questions received by February 15th will be included in the March 3rd poster and question session. Questions received by March 19th will be included in the follow-on webinar on April 9th. For related content, please refer to the poster by Benjamin Danso and Gianni Pereira on teleconferences, the presentation by Larissa Wu on modernizing drug substance assessment through CASA, and the presentation by Evelyn Hong and Hannah Pham on fee payments associated with APIs, and the presentation by David Skanky and Benjamin Danso on effective communication strategies for drug master files.